Well, a very warm welcome to another vlog. And it's been a while. It's been since Christmas since I switched on that video camera. Um, but it's not been that long since I've been out and about. And um, since I visited uh, the Jandia Peninsula in Fertje Ventura, and I'll link to that video up on the right hand side. I've been quite active, but not in landscape, um, uh, more in the wildlife. And I've been back in my hide, uh, shooting away uh, red squirrels and jays and so forth. Um, but I've also been mixing it up a little bit this year, doing a little bit of street photography, a little bit of ICM, but for the year ahead, I want to focus back in on some landscape photography and maybe continue with the wildlife photography. And that's why I've taken myself out here to the west coast of Clare. Um, and this is a magical landscape. No better place to start and quite a challenging landscape to photograph. Uh, it's a moonscape. Uh, it's Middle Earth and it was the inspiration for J.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and his good friend C.S. Lewis, who also wrote another wonderful piece of literature, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. They visited here quite often. And there's a cave not far from here called Paul na Gollum, Gollum's Cave. Um, so it's with that in mind, that romanticism, um, that mysticism, and this place is full of Celtic mythology, wonderful archeological sites. Now, the place I'm in at the moment is the middle of nowhere. I've driven up a back road and I've walked about a mile inland and I'm in search of a very unique forest. It's the story of the Scots pine. Now, Scots pine became extinct in Ireland um, and it's thought that they really became, uh, started declining um, four, five, six, seven thousand years ago. So there are no native Scots pine in Ireland from that stock. Recent plantations in the 17th and 18th century, um, and I may have mentioned a coronation pan plantation in Wicklow and also in Glendalough, they were all of Scotch origin, uh, brought in here and planted. Now recently, um, a small stunted Scots pine forest has been found here in the barn. In the distance here, I think I can see a few specimens. So let's go and try to find a good image for this afternoon. I don't know what I was expecting from this site. I've seen no photographs from it, but just the sheer excitement of hearing that we have our own Irish stock of Scots pine and restricted to this area over thousands of years as uh, this species has gone extinct within Ireland. And this really is the best specimen that I could find uh, in the open. Now, unfortunately, it's backlit uh, so it really doesn't make a, a, a good subject given the light. And I think what I was expecting from the site was to see Scots pine out on the limestone paving. Um, but I haven't found one yet and I'm not sure whether I will. Now it's quite overcast, but if the sun manages to break through, we might get a nice bit of contrast with the infrared camera. Well, it's no joke. Uh, when I say that I'm well and truly lost now and I'm a little bit unnerved because there are no pathways uh, in this area. Um, and I think I have a bearing of where I need to go. I can see Mullock Moor in the distance. But what a tree. Look at this, this bear. It's not even gnarled. Um, the bark, I think, is either petrified or has been stripped away. And there's beautiful striations all the way across uh, the trunk here. And some holes here from uh, insects. And it really is a, a, um, a very sad, but um, a beautiful and poignant 
I'm glad that I wandered on and I found something. It may not make a wonderful photograph, but by God, does this have character. Now I'm going to circle around, see what type of shot I'm going to take, whether it's a landscape, simple portrait shot, uh, infrared or colour. I think it's got to be infrared. We've got the some grasses here that might come up white. I, I'm betting that the tree trunk will come up quite dark. So that'll create a little bit of contrast in itself. So I'm going to get the infrared camera out and we'll give this chap a go. It's amazing what a little bit of decent light or half decent light can do. So I've made my way back through the wood and I think I know where I am now. And um, I've returned to this Scots pine tree. It's a very tight area. There's a little bit of fencing on the left um, and it's very difficult to get the tree in. But I put on uh, the uh, 135mm lens. It's a very tight crop. I've taken three shots, uh, portrait mode. Um, and. It looks fantastic in infrared. I love it. It's soft light, but it works very well with the infrared camera. So let's move on to the next spot. I'm not quite sure whether you're finding this video uh, of interest, um, but I just have a fascination for trees and I just love Scots pine trees and uh, I've stayed with the in infrared, I've switched back to the 50 mil and there's a beautiful high stone wall that runs along here. You can barely see it in the photograph but this singular Scots pine, it, it, it might not look special on its own but in this setting, in this woodland, um, it really is, um, it's doing it for me. Um, so another shot and um, I've taken a kind of panoramic shot here just to um, to show that tree in the landscape. So I'll put that up now and um, I hope you like it. Okay, so let's move on. I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, I've driven down to the burn today. I'm a little bit tired now. It's quite grey. I don't think there's going to be any light uh, for sunset. Um, so I'm going to find a place to park up for the night, uh, cook a nice meal um, and plan tomorrow. So I hope you can join me then uh, here in the burn. Well, it's a very misty morning here on the burn um, and I was tempted to go back to the Scots pine trees to photograph them in colour in that mist this morning and it may have been a better decision. Um, having said that, it's only quarter to seven in the morning so I've come out to a little meadow and there's some early orchids out and um, forget about the tripod. Tripod just brings you too high so I've placed the camera on a little bit of moss on the ground. It's a manual focus, 135mm lens, opened up to f2, looking for that dreamy uh, background and just parts of the flower in focus.
So uh, this afternoon I've climbed uh, to the top of probably the most iconic mountain uh, in the Burren, Mullochmore, and it looks over at Knockams. It's starting to rain here, so um, I'll probably uh, start making my way down as it's very grey uh, afternoon. But I had to see this scene, which is the scene of the folding limestone that was pushed up by tectonic forces behind me. And it really is stunning. I'd love to have a little bit of bright light uh, on uh, that landscape, but it's just not to be. Well, this is my second morning here at the Burren National Park and I'm here at Loch Gallon, which is on the Mullochmore Loop, a beautiful walk which leads up to Mullochmore here. Uh, you can just see it to the uh, left of me. Um, and there are the infrared images that I took yesterday afternoon. And it was on that alternate route that I took coming down the mountain that I found so many compositions that I was absolutely delighted with. Um, so it's about 6 a.m. Uh, the sun is catching the clouds above me here to the right. I'm very restricted in my composition here um, in regards to the position of that cloud, the only feature in the sky, um, and the stones and the two mountains that I wanted to get in, Mullochmore and Knockham. Um, so I'm using a 14 to 24 mil lens. Um, I've played around with a polarizer and I'm not sure whether I like or dislike the effect it's given me with regards to uh, revealing it, it, there's a lovely coppery color within the actual lake. The scattering stones I've tried just to ensure that they're separated that they fill uh, the uh, frame at the bottom as logically and as pleasingly as possible and then the two mountains are very distant and small in the frame and then you've got a big wide open area of sky that's doing nothing. <laughs> 